You a Swifty? I don't want to ruin it for the kids. <laughs> it's a bit like Facebook loses its cool when old people join in. Australia was basking in the glow of Taylor's heiress tour when the grown-ups ruined it for everyone. First by putting the dag into daggy dancing. Yeah, he's not a Johnny come lately, you know. Always been a fan for quite a long time. Then we pissed off Tay Tay's dad. Mm, and when the men in her life get angry. Mm. Then Scott Morrison cursed her popularity forever by trying to inject some hip into his valedictory speech in Parliament. Abby and Lily suggested that I should play a type of Taylor Swift bingo. <laughs> and I'm wearing the bracelet, by the way. <laughs> it has ScoMo on it. I have no words. Others do. Divisive. Slippery. Disappointing. Smug. And finally, the New South Wales Police Commissioner paraphrased Swift whilst defending her lacklustre response to the murders of Jesse Baird and Luke Davies. Said response including a heartfelt thanks to the alleged killer. Just Nightmare week for Karen Webb. Not only was she dealing with several murders, this was happening. Notorious ex-brothel owner Eddie Hayson has been arrested on the Gold Coast, accused of directing a major drug supply ring. If you're described as a colourful Sydney identity and you live on the Gold Coast, it's probably only a matter of time before you come to the attention of the constabulary. Hey there, criminal. It's me, Johnny Law. Eddie Hayson's on serious drug charges now, but it's not the first time he's been on the police radar. He's ticked just about every box in the How to Be Part of the Australian Underworld Handbook. Could have written the book. At least a contributing author. Eddie rose to prominence when he opened one of Sydney's first openly legal knock shops. Stiletto was an upmarket bordello with a bogan name, which opened in Camperdown in 2002. On any given night, you could find an assortment of professional crooks, namely jockeys and NRL players, enjoying a good polishing. Of their cars. The industrial sex factory, such was its scale, had a professional car wash in the basin, I'm not joking, which allowed a customer to tell the missus without blushing that he'd been busy with the hose when asked, what have you been doing all night? Eddie sold the brothel for 18 or 20 million bucks a decade later, but the proceeds didn't touch the sides of his dead hole because he owed north of 50 mil. Jeez, that's a lot of IOUs. He loved a pun. So much so, he is no longer welcome at Star Casino or any TAB. When not playing the tables, he was at the track. When the race starts, run really fast. Eddie won two mil after accurately predicting that Andrew Johns would miss a game through injury. That was in about 2006. Ten years later, he tried to transfer tens of thousands of dollars to Kieran Foran's account. That was the same year he flicked 60 large to Comanchero kingpin Mark Buddle. Because, and I quote, I like him and I respect him. Respect. Just a few red flags there for the cops. But all that time, they didn't lay a glove on him. Miss, 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 miss. Oh, miss until now. Allegedly. The 55-year-old is charged with transporting 16 kilograms of methamphetamine and 5 kilos of MDMA from WA to Sydney last August. Not the first time he's rubbed up against the illicit drugs trade. His former partner, Jamalee LaHood, who ran Stiletto and once went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Fadi Ibrahim over a waterfront mansion, was last year charged with money laundering relating to a 100 kilo seizure of meth. That shipment was allegedly arranged by a shady individual known only as Mr Bond. And is linked, we're told, to a million dollars which Cop Sailor Hood collected from a vehicle in North Sydney. What do you put a million bucks in cash into? I have that information. Two Woolworths bags. <laughs> I think I'm done, guys. Jamalee is sister of Jabul LaHood, who is currently serving a life sentence for his role in a billion dollar plot to import 1.2 tonnes of meth into the West Australian port town of Geraldton. Realising that 1,200 kilograms of meth was a lot even for WA's enthusiastic meth consumers... In Western Australia? Anyway. <laughs> LaHood and his posse planned to distribute it across Australia. It would have been big profits. Rivalled only by that other lucrative cartel, the Australian iron ore industry. After unveiling a near record profit at his mining company Fortescue Metals Group, Andrew Forrest crashed back to earth with a shucking thud on Monday when his agricultural company Harvest Road was accused of quietly binning 12 tonnes of oysters. Turns out the stuff which made it to the tip on the south coast of Western Australia was the slimy bits nobody wanted. Slippery little suckers. 
but the waste of any food, even a delicacy famed as an aphrodisiac, wasn't a great look for a bloke who's committed to ending world hunger. But that concern was overshadowed by the more pressing problem of what to do if Albany was overrun by flocks of horny binchooks. The week got a lot worse on Wednesday when Andrew had a showdown with National Party MPs. They weren't buying his dream of a world powered by cheap, plentiful, reliable, renewable electricity generated by wind farms and solar panels, presumably built by pixies riding unicorns, such is the fanciful nature of this future nirvana. And he said to him, quote, you're an effing snake oil salesman. Well, farmers don't like solar panels competing for land. Or wind turbines ruining the view. Plus, the unicorns eat the crops. It descended into a stare-off between the men, which lasted about 10 seconds. A stare-off, hey? Mm. Risky business for Andrew because politicians can do a good stink eye. Apparently Twiggy was called a gutless prick. Not completely shocking language from a member of the National Party. So disingenuous. Should have. Forrest had been in Canberra to address the National Press Club, at which he said he doesn't want Australia to try and I quote, to cling to fossil fuels forever. In fact, our self-appointed climate crusader wants us to cling to fossil fuels just long enough for him to generate a solid return on investment at the giant LNG import terminal he's quietly building at Port Kembla. I feel like such a hypocrite. So the Nats do have a point. Oh, maybe. They all need to take ScoMo's lead. There is no bad blood, as I've always been someone who's been able to shake it off. <laughs> I'm Ben Harvey.